Here I have the power supply of an original Apple Macintosh LC. It looks basically pristine, but this power supply hides a dark secret inside. The plague of old electronics, leaking capacitors. It was only going to be a matter of time before the damage was irreparable, so I got to work replacing capacitors, or recapping as it's called. A quick safety note, this video is not instructional. Working on power supplies can be dangerous, and you should only do this if you can work safely and are comfortable with high voltage electronics. With that out of the way, the first step was to identify the capacitors I needed. The Recap Mac website is an excellent resource given the positions and values of the capacitors, but didn't recommend specific ones. I turned to Google and found a forum post by Fizbin on the 68k MLA forums suggesting a range of Nichicon capacitors, a highly regarded capacitor manufacturer. However, I was planning to order capacitors for other projects at the same time. It proved difficult to track down a single supplier, so I ended up substituting some parts for equivalent specifications from other manufacturers. I eventually ended up with capacitors from Panasonic and Worth, which while well regarded, might make this a bit of an experiment. Normally, when recapping, the first thing I would do would be to try and clean everything. With how packed the power supply is, I elected to instead go straight ahead to removing the capacitors. I need to be careful here to only desolder the capacitors, so I double and triple check their positions. To desolder, I added a bit of fresh flux, then placed a blob of solder on the tip of the iron and held that to the contacts until any corrosion was burned through and all the solder melted. Pumping that solder away usually left the pin free and clear. After removing all the capacitors, I applied fresh solder to the pads and then used solder braid to clean them. These now are all the capacitors that were removed. Most of them are leaking, or just starting to, showing that I caught this power supply at the right time. Now on to cleaning the PCP for real, I made several passes with cotton buds and isopropyl alcohol, top and bottom. I made sure to get into every nook and cranny, and it took several passes to remove. I admit the flashlight is making it hard to see on camera, but it did make it much easier at the time for me to see at least. And not only the PCB needed cleanup, but also the case where it looked like there was capacitor spray from where a few of them might have given up violently. I also realized these transistor things were held on with clips, and removing them, I discovered more electrolyte between them and their heatsink that would definitely have caused problems long term. Now, putting together the first draft of this script, I forgot to write about the most important part, putting in the new capacitors. Just basic soldering, and the process was made much easier by an interesting pattern of negative always being either down or left from my perspective. Put a capacitor in, bend a leg or two to keep it in place, solder, then trim the legs. This went pretty quick. Around now, I realized there was some electrolyte on the side of the PCB that also needed to be cleaned up. I then cleaned the bottom of the PCB with plenty of alcohol and a toothbrush to loosen up any flux or remaining electrolyte then blotted away with paper towels. Reassembling everything, I made sure to put on some new thermal grease where I'd been rubbing away the old, but more importantly, put the insulating shield back in place. High voltage does need to be respected. After waiting for any last alcohol to dry, it was testing time. I plugged it in and flipping it on, I was pleased there was no explosion. Testing with the multimeter, however, also showed no voltage, which was less pleasing. Listening carefully, I could hear a clicking sound, and reading online, this sounds like it was the power supply resetting, and that the high voltage input side of the power supply was fine for this to happen. A little bit lost at what to do, I continued reading online, which suggested that the power supply might not start without a load, so I attached it to the LC, and was pleased to find the fan spinning, and even to hear a chime. The voltages also all looked reasonably good on the multimeter. Now that the capacitors are replaced, I'm reasonably happy that the power supply won't be rapidly getting worse. As I mentioned, I was pleased to hear the LC chime, but there's evidence of its capacitors leaking as well, so I want to get those replaced soon too. But that's for another day. Thanks for watching.